My name is Noreen Rashid. I'm from Gaza, Palestine, but born and raised in America. I don't really know where to start, but to begin, my mom's entire side of the family, except for one brother, lives there. So I have dozens of cousins, um, and my dad has two sisters and a brother there, and all of their children and grandchildren live there. On November 11th, we got news that the Israeli army was closing in around a Shifa hospital and around a Nasser neighborhood, which is where my grandmother lives. So we received news that her cousin, Dr. Humam al worked at Shifa, and her uncle, his father, Mahmoud al were killed in Israeli shelling that fired and hit the first floor of their house. So we spent that night grieving with... Um, Dr. Humam's sister and Mahmoud al daughter. And then a day or so later, on November 13th, around 6 a.m. in America, we received news that my baby cousins, Nuran and Nizan al along with their father, Ahmed al were shot and killed by Israeli snipers outside of their own home, within the gates of their home. Um, my uncle, had sent them to go get water for their bath. And my grandmother was inside the house alongside with two other women from our family. And when they hadn't come back for a while, she asked them where they were. And so he went to go look outside and the water tank was right underneath the front window. And so he looked outside of the window and he saw their dismembered bodies on the floor. and. So he he basically went into a state of what my grandmother called psychosis. And so she tried to get him to stay inside so that he wouldn't also be shot and killed. But after an hour or so, he ended up ripping down the curtains from the windows and going outside to cover them because he refused to leave their bodies uncovered. And then he laid in between them and was grieving and speaking to them until Israeli snipers shot and killed him as well. So... No, oh, devastation is, I guess, an understatement in that sense when it comes to what happened. I wish that people knew how kind the people of Gaza were because I was able, I was given the opportunity to visit Gaza in the summer right before this happened, July and August. I was there for about a month and the hospitality of these people is truly something you never see and like I feel like I've never experienced before like even my dad told me that like my dad's father died when he was 15 years old he told me the neighborhood raised him and so when we were walking through his neighborhood we walked into a masjid actually and then my uncle who was with me said these are Fauzi my dad's name these are Fauzi's children and he remembered him and my dad hasn't been there in decades so their kindness and also I'd say their hope because they're consistently saying alhamdulillah and thanking God. And like us who live in America, we experience like the most trivial things and we start feeling hopeless, but they're still so full of that hope. So I'd say both kindness and hope. I struggled a lot with survivor's guilt and feeling as though it wasn't fair that all of my cousins didn't get the opportunities that I had. I've always just known Gaza to be occupied and I've always just known this to be my life and for most of my life people didn't even know what Palestine was like at work sometimes customers would ask me where I was from and I tell them Palestine and they didn't know what that was and for the first time in my life I'm seeing Palestine be spoken about and I'm seeing the tides kind of turn in a sense where I feel as though the younger generation especially is showing solidarity with Palestine and they're starting to actually learn and research and it's not something that's just forgotten about like it always was. It was always just something that we had to accept, that I felt that I had to accept that Gaza was occupied, that Palestine was ox occupied. It was just what it was. But now I feel as though people are questioning things and people are standing, against, standing up against Zionism and the Zionist regime. And 
I think there's hope in that, despite the destruction and the, the sadness and the tragedy that we've all been experiencing. I think there's hope, and I think that's more important than anything else. I'm so beyond grateful that I am given opportunities to be a mouthpiece for my family, but I also want to speak for all the families that don't have those mouthpieces, that families that have stories as tragic as mine, that have families that can't be buried. Like, my cousins weren't able to be buried for 11 days, and if it weren't for my family, like, reaching out to somebody during the temporary ceasefire, they would still be lying on the ground outside of their house. And I think there are so many families that don't get justice, and they don't even have people speak their names. And I just want to remind people that they're not numbers. They're really not numbers. And if I didn't live in New Jersey, if I wasn't an American citizen, nobody would know about Nuran Razal Khalo Ahmad. But I am them. Like, I am Nuran, I am Razan. I could have been them. It could have been me. It could have easily been me. It could have been any one of us, really. I just wanted to remind people to know and take into account that these are human beings they had hobbies, that they had personality traits, that they all had specific ways they spoke or things that like we will, us as family members will forever remember about them, that you guys read a headline and it's just over, but for us it's forever. And that sticks with us. I think you think about it, it's like a ceasefire. A couple weeks ago could have prevented so much.